Hello, I'm Keith Dodge, Communications Manager for Cardinal Health Specialty Solutions. Welcome to our conversation on best data management practices for value-based care success. With me today is Barry Russo, CEO of the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders in Fort Worth, Texas. Barry's practice has been participating in value-based care programs for nearly a decade, and today we'll be talking to him about some of the best practices they've followed and the lessons they've learned in managing their data. Barry, thanks so much for joining us today. Sure, happy to be here. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out. We know um, right now it's, a, it's an uncertain time for many practices as they manage the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're, we're very appreciative of you sharing your time with us. Yeah, I'm sure. So um, to get started today, we'd like to just um, have you share a little bit about your practice um, and how many sites you serve. So can you tell us a little bit more about your practice? Sure. So uh, we're a private community oncology group. We have 20 physicians and uh, medical oncology, radiation oncology, gynecologic oncology, breast surgery. Uh, we have a uh, retail pharmacy, imaging, uh, certainly obviously radiation. We do have a cyber knife, uh, so we do a lot of stereotactic uh, radio surgery. Uh, we have nine sites, <clears throat> and um, uh, and uh, about about 220, 230 employees uh, with 20 physicians. We have, um, I think, we're up to 12 or 13 uh, advanced practitioners. Great, thanks. Um, can you talk a little bit about how value-based care has changed your practice's culture? Um, you said before, I believe, that it's been really transformative for your practice. So can you provide examples of that? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> in so many ways, on so many fronts, to be honest with you. So, uh, gosh, it's, it's, it's even hard to know where to start because we have, uh, there's been so many things we had to change. First, um, we obviously had to get on a pathway system because uh, you have to have some kind of standard approach if you're going to understand your cost. Uh, and uh, lucky enough, uh, we got on into a pathway system uh, sometime around 2008, uh, which uh, we needed in order to get onto the United program we started in 2009. So we have been on uh, the VIA pathway system uh, now for well 12 years and so um, <clears throat> transition was a little bumpy but um, uh, and especially we were kind of way out in front of the crowd as far as getting on pathways and uh, but an essential part of <clears throat> of how you manage a population understand your costs and standardization of care so uh, and we're still on the same pathway system as I mentioned, and that that uh, continues to go well for us. <clears throat> Secondly, it was clear to us that we uh, that our historical approach to triage, which was uh, essentially assigning one of the nurses in the chemo room to the triage calls for the day or for the week, was not going to be successful. So, because uh, the nurse in the chemo room was busy and, and she would take a couple of calls and our how many calls came in and she would look out in the chemo room. It was busy and so uh, her first inclination wasn't um, let's bring the patient in. It was how do we prevent any more people from getting to the chairs because we're all so busy right now anyway. So, um, it was clear to us that that wasn't going to work if we were really going to triage patients in an active manner with a focus on <clears throat> keeping them out of the emergency room, keeping them out of the hospital, uh, getting them into the clinic uh, if they needed to be seen in, in acute fashion, and getting them into infusion if they needed uh, antibiotics or they needed fluids or any that kind of thing. <clears throat> so. We pulled triage out of the chemo room. We uh, actually put it um, in a different uh, section of the of clinic. We centralized it for uh, all of our clinics. 
which in itself was a challenge uh, because a lot of the nurses at the uh, at the clinics wanted to be able to you know talk to their patients and manage them themselves if the patients got home or were at home and not feeling well, but uh, that again. Uh, was not a successful strategy as far as decentralized triage. So we centralized triage, we pulled it out of chemo, uh, we gave the triage nurses metrics of success related to the number of cases they can keep by the emergency room and uh, the reduction in the hospital days. So um, <clears throat> we've had tremendous success with that and I, I don't know how we would run a value-based program without uh, an active uh, triage program. We also have uh, and develop triage pathways. Uh, those uh, originally started when we were in Come Home and then uh, as that ended we sort of evolved them further and continue to uh, evolve them. Uh, so that the, that's allowed the triage nurses to have some uh, independence in regards to decision making about patients because the pathways uh, sort of direct that and the pathways were you know approved and finalized by our physicians so that's helped a lot uh, we also um, uh, hired and pulled in what we call major case managers internally so most insurance companies have case management division and major case managers who focus on patients that have chronic illness which we consider cancer to be and and <clears throat> so uh, we're basically, you know, a little mini insurance company and uh, with an active triage program and all our triage nurses are RNs and OCNs and so are, are our case managers and so uh, our case managers are really focused on outgoing calls uh, and identifying patients that are at higher risk and trying to intervene well in advance to keep them out of the hospital and out of the emergency room and uh, and identify areas where coordination of care is, is missing and, and uh, that's where the data has helped us a lot and I'll talk about that in a little while until we get past sort of the infrastructure part but we also have navigators, we have nurse navigators and um, <clears throat> you know their role as far as educating the patient about call us first and they're sort of the first place that the patient uh, starts to hear about um, a value-based care and, uh, and advanced directives and, uh, and palliative care and those kinds of things and, and uh, the nurse navigators really are the educational arm for, uh, for, our, um, for our patient. We also uh, pulled in what we call a set of support services and it became evident to us that we needed support services for the patient. So we have uh, dietitians on staff. <clears throat> we uh, did um, uh, pull in a palliative care physician, and uh, she is one of the internal medicine physicians in in town, and uh, who's also boarded in, uh, uh, in palliative care. And so she does clinic care, a palliative care uh, clinic. That was you know part of our support services. We. Um, have a, uh, a mentioned dietitian. We have social workers on staff. We have uh, a psychologists on staff uh, because the psychosocial issues involved when you're trying to manage a population are significant. And uh, we had no idea how much uh, the so psychosocial and socioeconomic issues were going to impact uh, the cost structure of the patient, but they do significantly. So. Um, we have a full-time massage therapist and an acupuncturist on staff, and and the uh, you know you think okay, well that's that's all to make the patient feel good. Well, there's, there's certainly a lot of healing of all associated with feeling good, uh, but it's really uh, they've done an amazing job on uh, pain control and neuropathy, and uh, <clears throat> and that that in itself helps with. Uh, inpatient utilization, ER utilization, drug cost, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we also have an uh, integrative medicine clinic that we run, which is run by a PharmD who's boarded in functional medicine, and she, her focus is um, the supplements the patient is on and making, trying to keep them as healthy as possible uh, during uh, 
pre-treatment, post, during treatment, and post-treatment. So, so this whole support structure um, uh, uh, or support services structure has been a major part of what we have uh, put in place to try again managing the population to really focus on healing lives uh, and not just treating the cancer. When you get into value-based care, it's very much about healing lives and not about just treating cancer. And so, uh, we've certainly learned uh, a lot of lessons about that. So, so we've added a lot of things uh, to the infrastructure of our organization, and that has had a major cultural change for us. Um, understanding the value of some of these things, very much understanding uh, the need for team approach in taking care of patients. It takes a village. Uh, you know, used to be everything, all decisions were physician uh, centric and, and, uh, and, and now it's very much more of a team approach. It's certainly that's physician driven, but, uh, I think it's been a, a, a cultural evolution for our, our physicians to get a sense that, uh, there are so many members of the team that are so important that can help in the process, uh, and, now it's sort of an expectation that all of these components uh, actually work with the patient and the physicians really depend on them. So it's been a major cultural uh, shift for us and, and from, the, uh, from the clinical side. From the business side, uh, you know, we're constantly looking at, uh, you know, uh, things, uh, biosimilars uh, and uh, generics and things that, um, you know, where historically, uh, practices look at margin, uh, and now we're having to balance margin with cost, and, uh, and it is a balancing act, and biosimilars have created even more confusion and complexity associated with that. So um, that's been a, a sort of a business cultural change for us, too, and we have these debates now all the time, uh, uh, sort of that margin versus uh, cost, and, and how do we optimize uh, that whole piece so that we uh, can optimize what's um, uh, the overall value of the patient. So um, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting evolution. It isn't something if, if you're in value-based care or you're starting value-based care, it certainly isn't something that is done overnight. It, it's something we've spent several years now uh, and continue. We're nowhere. It's, it's not a destination. It is definitely a journey. Great. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your time with us today. Again, we really appreciate it. Sure. No problem at all. Thanks for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk with you.